would take it in any way. Cardiac arrest does not discriminate. It can affect all ages, genders, nationalities, and races. This is why early recognition and immediate cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, are crucial for survival from cardiac arrest. Healthcare providers are the backbone of the systems of care in both the community and medical facilities. Advanced rescue measures cannot be successful on their own without solid basic life support, or BLS. This training will guide you through the key practices of high quality BLS. Products are shown for demonstration purposes only. The AHA does not endorse or recommend any specific manufacturer or product. In order to show skills clearly, the healthcare providers in this video do not always use recommended personal protective equipment such as gloves. The AHA's mission of saving lives is a global initiative. The AHA recognizes that heart disease is the number one killer of both women and men. However, most skills in this video will be demonstrated on male victims to respect global awareness and cultural sensitivity. Returns with an AED. 
This introduces the next link in the chain of survival. The AED, or Automated External Defibrillator, is a lightweight, portable device that can identify an abnormal heart rhythm that needs a shock. The AED can then deliver a shock that can convert a rhythm back to normal. Most sudden cardiac arrests are triggered by abnormal heart rhythms called arrhythmias. A common and treatable arrhythmia causing cardiac arrest is ventricular fibrillation, or VF. With VF, the heart's electrical impulses suddenly become chaotic and ineffective. Blood flow to the brain and other vital organs stops abruptly, and the person loses consciousness. Death usually follows unless a normal heart rhythm and pulse are restored within minutes. The AED uses voice prompts, lights, and on-screen messages to tell the rescuer the steps to take. AEDs are simple to operate, allowing lay rescuers and healthcare providers to attempt defibrillation safely. As the emergency medical services, or EMS providers, arrive and take over care, they provide advanced life support, extending the chain to give a person the best chance of survival. Advanced life support can occur in any setting and provides more advanced treatment. Once the return of spontaneous circulation, or ROS, is achieved, EMS transports the person for post-cardiac arrest care. Post-cardiac arrest care after ROS focuses on preventing the return of cardiac arrest and improving long-term survival. Recovery from cardiac arrest continues long after hospital discharge and includes physical, emotional, and family support. These six links show the most important actions needed to treat cardiac arrest. BLS is the foundation for saving lives after a cardiac arrest. In this course, you'll learn the skills of high-quality CPR for people of all ages and practice delivery of these skills, both as a single rescuer and as a member of a multi-rescuer team. Now, let's go back and review a rescue, focusing on the steps of BLS as they happen. There are several steps of BLS that you'll need to perform when you suspect that a person is in cardiac arrest. First, scan the scene to assess safety. Then, check to see if the person is responsive by tapping and shouting. If they do not respond, activate the emergency response system and get an AED, or send someone to activate the emergency response system. Next, check for breathing by watching the chest for rise and fall. Abnormal breaths are common in the first minutes of a cardiac arrest. These abnormal breaths are called agonal gasps and should not be confused with normal breathing. Rescuers can sometimes mistake agonal breathing for normal breathing and fail to recognize cardiac arrest and initiate CPR. Seizure-like activity can also sometimes delay the recognition of cardiac arrest. If the person has no signs of responsiveness, the emergency response system has been activated with an AED on the way, and there are no signs of breathing or a pulse, then immediately begin CPR starting with chest compressions. The delivery of rapid, strong compressions is a priority, but be sure to deliver ventilation as soon as the pocket mask or bag mask device arrives. Once the AED arrives, it is important to use it immediately. We will go over proper AED use later in the course. You never know what situation you'll face or what resources will be accessible. It's important to have the knowledge and framework to provide high-quality, life-saving CPR regardless of the conditions and circumstances. Now, we will focus on the individual skills that rescuers perform. It is most effective to perform CPR as a team, but to be an effective team member, you'll need the individual skills of CPR. So, we'll start there. As a healthcare provider, your first step is to assess the surroundings for safety. Then, tap and shout to see if the person responds. If not, you should shout for nearby help or activate the emergency response system in your workplace. Check for breathing by scanning the person's chest, looking for chest rods. Check for a carotid pulse. The technique of feeling the carotid pulse is usually easier to perform on the side closest to you. Use two or three fingers to locate the person's trachea, and then slide your fingers into the groove just to one side of the trachea. You can scan for breathing and check for a pulse simultaneously to minimize time before compressions. The check for breathing and pulse should take at least 5, but no more than 10 seconds. If you observe no breathing, abnormal breathing, or only gasping, and you do not feel a pulse, ensure that help is on the way and start chest compressions immediately. Before you start chest compressions, make sure the person is lying face up on the 
surface. If you need to remove clothing to expose the person's chest, do it quickly. You need to work with a bare chest because later you'll attach the eight D pads to bare skin. By starting compressions, you are initiating the CAB sequence, or compressions, airway, and breathing sequence. In the first few minutes of a cardiac arrest, there's still oxygen in the bloodstream. Starting CPR with chest compressions can pump that oxygenated blood to the brain and heart. After you give compressions, open the person's airway and deliver breaths. It's important to minimize interruptions in chest compressions to 10 seconds or less. Each time you stop compressions, the blood flow to the heart and brain decreases significantly. When you resume compressions, it takes several compressions to increase blood flow to the heart and brain back to the same levels. So any interruption in chest compressions can result in low blood flow and minimize the chance of ROTS. To begin, place the heel of one hand on the center of your mannequin's bare chest over the lower half of the breastbone. Place the heel of your other hand on top of the first. Make sure that your shoulders are directly over your hands with your elbows straight. And when we start, remember to push straight down on the breastbone to get adequate depth. When you push, push hard and fast. There is some evidence that compressing too deep can increase injuries from CPR. However, a larger problem is that most providers don't compress deep enough. So focus on making sure your compressions are deep enough. Compress at a rate between 100 to 120 per minute while counting out loud, making sure the compressions are at least two inches or at least five centimeters deep and allowing the chest to recoil after each compression. We recommend using a feedback device that provides real-time corrective feedback on CPR quality regarding rate, depth, and chest recoil, not just when performing CPR in practice, but also in your workplace. We'll talk more about feedback devices throughout the course, and you'll complete some practice and testing with them later. You can follow along with what's on the screen as you perform compressions yourself. You'll perform three sets of 30 compressions after you assess the scene. We'll pause here while everyone gets into position. Alright, we have it with the pocket mask. A bag mask device might not be too far away, but when minutes and seconds matter, the time saved by being proficient with a pocket mask is invaluable. We'll use a pocket mask for the one rescuer activity in our training today. When the guard finishes a cycle of compressions, he quickly places the mask with the one-way valve on the person's face. He delivers two breaths and returns to needing compressions immediately to minimize interruptions in chest compressions to less than 10 seconds. Now let's examine the technique. Place the mask on the person's face, using the bridge of the nose as a guide for correct positioning. Seal the mask against the face by placing the index finger and thumb of your hand that's closest to the top of the person's head along the edge of the mask. Now, place the thumb of your other hand along the lower edge of the mask. Then, place the fingers of that hand under the bony part of the lower jaw near the chin, taking care to avoid the soft tissue under the chin. After that, open the airway by using a head tilt chin lift. By lifting the jaw to bring the chin forward, you'll lift the person's tongue away from the back of the throat, relieving a possible airway obstruction. Press the mask down while lifting the jaw to hold the mask tightly against the face and give two breaths while watching for slight chest rise. Actually seeing the chest rise with each breath is the best way to ensure that your breaths are effective. Breaths should be delivered over one second each with just enough force to produce visible chest rise. Avoid excessive ventilation and pause about one second between each breath. In this practice session, be sure to hold the mask firmly against the face while lifting the jaw. Also, watch for the chest to rise as you deliver each breath over one second. We'll pause here for you to get into position with the mannequins to practice the technique of opening the airway and giving breaths by using your pocket mask with a one-way valve. We'll practice five sets of two breaths along with the video. It's okay, we're going to practice. 